let's have a look at it together. Um, what I'm going to do is standard procedure. I'm going to jot down the important details of the question, and then together we will look back at that table and try and sort out what's going on. So, Venus is 16 years old, and she is at home. So, 16 years at home. Those are both important. What else do we know about her? Uh, she's a student, so that affects her income threshold and so on for these allowances. And she manages somehow to earn an impressive amount of money while she's studying. So while she's a student, she has income of $510 per fortnight. Not bad, okay? Um, she's entitled to youth allowance, calculate the amount that she will receive. Okay, so there are all the essential details. Let's turn back. We are going to need the table as well as those few paragraphs underneath the table as well to try and dissect what's going on. Okay. So, firstly, we have a look. Um, you might actually need to turn back two pages to look at the smaller table, which tells you which category she's in and therefore what the full allowance would be if she qualified for the whole thing. So, being that she's a 16 year old, doesn't say anything about any children, and she's at home, what will her full allowance be? Can you see? It, it looks like the first one, doesn't it? Because the first uh, row is about single, no children, and under 18, which she is at home. Okay. So what I'm going to do is another color here. So I'm going to say this means she has a full allowance of 200. And what did we just say? 220, 40. Uh, yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. That looks good. Thank you. Not too, uh, I'll just move this. <laughs> Okay, that's good, but I need to account for what the rest of this information tells me. So go over the page, go over the page, and now we're going to find out, well, will she get this full allowance or not? You're probably guessing she doesn't, but we want to work out how much she actually gets. Now, because of who she is, which of the rows of the table, we're looking at this big, long one, right? This big one here. Which of the rows of the table applies to her, applies to Venus? Um, it looks to me like it's the very first row. Do you see that? Like, you know how each row, it's kind of got two rows in it for student or unemployed? She's a student, okay? So therefore, she has a threshold of $400 to get the full allowance. She's quite clearly over that threshold, okay? But she's also under the threshold for getting a part allowance, okay? Do you see that? So I see that she can go up to $400, um, and she's going to be less than $780.67. Does that make sense? So I see she's going to get a part of that. So I'm going to just write that down. So now what I need to work out is, well, if she's getting a part allowance, how much is her allowance going to get reduced? And that's where now we turn past the table and look underneath in those paragraphs to try and work out which of these um, applies to her. Uh, we're lucky. I'm going to pick this example just later. Quick. It's the first paragraph, right? Read it with me. For students who earn a fortnightly income of between 400 and 480, the fortnightly allowance reduces by 50 cents in the dollar. Pause. Is that Venus? No. It's not. It, she's gone past, she's not only gone past the, um, the threshold for a full allowance, which is 400, she's also gone past the threshold for getting like that 50 cent reduction, which is what the next sentence now tells us, right? For income above 480, the allowance is reduced by 60 cents in the dollar. So there's a second kind of reduction which is bigger. And so the more you earn, the more aggressively the government is going to reduce your allowance. Okay. So here's the way we're going to do this, pen back in hand. We're now going to work out how much she's got in excess and how much she's going to get a reduction. So because this happens twice, remember she went over two thresholds, she went over the 400 threshold, and then she also went over the 480 threshold. Do you remember that? So there's going to be an excess over 480, and there's also going to be a second excess, but we handle them differently because there's a different reduction for each. So the excess over 480 is 510, take away 480. Okay. So that looks to me like it's $30. Are you okay with that? You see where I got that from? It's the amount over that, it's the difference there. So if that's the excess over 480, there's a reduction that applies to that. Have a look. It's that second sentence there. It starts with, for income over 100, 480, which is this. How many cents in the dollar? 60 cents. Now, to clarify that that's what I'm talking about, I'm going to call this the 60 cent reduction, right? 60 cents out of every dollar of the allowance gets removed. Okay. So I've got to go 30 
times 60 cents. 30 times $0.60. Okay. Now you can check that in your calculator. Though, I think these are easy enough numbers. Like what's 3 times 6? 3 times 6? That's just 18, right? Now is it going to be 180 or 18 or 1.8? Like that's the 18. decimal. It's clearly going to be 18, right? So um, you can do these little mental tricks for yourself, just like 180 is clearly too big, $1.80 is clearly too small, 18 is Goldilocks, just right. So there's a 60 cent reduction. Okay. That's the first one. But there's a second one, isn't there? Right? So I'm going to say there's also an excess over $400. Okay. Now, this is a bit sneaky. Please watch this really carefully, right? Um, an easy mistake to make would be to say, look, she earns 510, yeah? So how much is that over 400? And the answer is there's a 110 difference here, yeah? So it would be a, you know, a common sense thing to say 110, but in fact it's not. We've already dealt with 30 of those $110. Do you notice that? We've dealt with that excess. So that $30, I don't need to worry about anymore. This excess over 400, is the 480 that's remaining, take away 400. That's 80. Okay. Can I say that again? Because that went by pretty quickly and it's confusing to people, right? Even though her total excess over $400 is 110. We all saw that, okay? I've already dealt with $30 of that excess, right? So 110 is what I start with. I've taken off the top 30 and now there's 80 left, right? And so I'm gonna calculate the reduction on this $80. So now, look back at the paragraph underneath. It's not a 60 cent reduction, it's a 50 cent reduction. So for every one of these $80, she's going to lose 50 cents. And I think we can do that one pretty quickly in our heads. That's just half a dollar each time. So that is $40. Okay, now grab another color if you've got it there and highlight for yourself because we've just done four things. By the way, can you see how important using words is, right? Four things, they're all different and you do not want to confuse them with each other. Here is reduction one, that 18 dollars. And here is reduction two. Now I can combine those green things with what her full allowance would have been and then I'll work out how much she's actually going to get paid or how much you're actually going to get paid. Okay? So now to conclude, I would say, therefore, um, how would I word it? I guess I'd say uh, allowance that's paid Because the whole idea is there is an allowance that she gets, but some of it is withheld. So only some of it gets paid to her. Um, it's going to be that 22040 that we started with, but we're going to take away both of these reductions, the 18 and the 40. Okay. Okay, this one I cannot do in my head, so I'm going to help me out. A hundred and something. Hundred and sixty-two. Thank you. Okay, ta-da! So you can see, this is, this is why I didn't want to confuse this with the questions you were doing last lesson. Um, because there's these extra steps here, right? You just got to watch out, like, if they pass a threshold, and then they pass another threshold, then you've got to deal with each of those in turn. But the nice of it is not more complicated, you just got to be a little more careful with the steps you go through.